how do you leave a young lady on Interstate 10 and there's no criminal, nothing? We want the police officers who investigate to investigate this like it's their family, like it's their daughter. Arashine McTeer rang in her 26th birthday with friends in downtown Jacksonville last Friday. Her father says she had a lot to celebrate. McTeer just graduated college with honors and was starting her career in the medical field. I want to see my baby in her uniform with her name saying that she worked for Dr. So-and-so. And I want to see her grow up to one day be a mother and a wife. Dreams cut short. 12.38, I text my daughter. Happy birthday. I'm so proud of you. I love you. She texts me back. Thank you. I love you, too. That's the last message I have from my phone. That's the last message I ever get in my phone. A Florida Highway Patrol report states McTeer was walking within the outside travel lane on I-10 when she was hit by two cars just before three early Saturday morning. We, we just want answers in order to have an understanding of, of what could have allowed, what could have led up to this. McTeer's family says they haven't been able to get in contact with the two friends who she went out with. They don't understand why she was left on the side of the interstate alone. Right there was that rock. Right there was our rock and they took that rock from us. They left it on IT unattended. This is the story of 26-year-old Arajane McTeer, a bright young lady who just graduated with honors from the medical assistant and phlebotomy program. She went out to celebrate her birthday with her friends, but sadly, at some point while riding on the highway at around 2 in the morning, Arajane would exit the vehicle, her friends would leave her, she would be struck by two vehicles, and would tragically pass away. What would make Arajane get out of a vehicle on a busy highway in the dark? Was she forced out or did she exit the vehicle on her own, and how could her friends leave her on a dangerous highway alone and drive off? Welcome to Viral Crimes. Subscribe and hit the bell icon for more stories. This story takes us to Douglas, Georgia. Situated in the heart of South Georgia, Douglas is a charming southern city nestled in Coffee County, known for its rich history and warm hospitality. Arajane, a resident of Douglas, Georgia, was affectionately known as Rare Air Strawberry. She was born on June 24, 1996, in Asilla, Georgia. She graduated from Coffee High School in 2014. Arajane achieved an important milestone in 2021 when she graduated with honors from Yukartya Health Care Center's phlebotomy and medical assistant program. She was extremely dedicated to her schoolwork and was really looking forward to working in the medical field and furthering her education. Arajane, often called Rane, was a cherished daughter, sister, granddaughter, aunt, cousin, and friend. She had a remarkable ability to brighten any room she walked into. Her sense of humor, role as the life of the party, and her uplifting words made her a beloved presence among her loved ones. Arajane had a deep love for her family and enjoyed playfully teasing them, and her family had a deep love for her. On June 25, 2022, Arajane was in Jacksonville, Florida celebrating her birthday with friends. After partying, the group of friends were traveling on I-10 in Jacksonville, and at some point, the vehicle was stopped on the highway, and Arajane exited the vehicle. The details of why Arajane was outside the vehicle are unclear, but the friends left her behind, and she began walking on the highway. It is reported that her friends called multiple hospitals and contacted the police, but there were no signs of Arajane. Whether she was forced out of the vehicle or decided to get out at her own free will is unknown, but what would happen next would be shocking and devastating to Arajane's loved ones and those involved in the tragedy. At approximately 2.50 a.m., Arajane was walking westbound in the outside travel lane on I-10. In a deeply unfortunate turn of events, Arajane was struck by not just one, but two vehicles that were also traveling in the same westbound direction. The drivers of these vehicles reacted responsibly by immediately pulling over to the side of the road and parking, recognizing the seriousness of the situation. They waited patiently for the arrival of the first responders, who were urgently needed at the scene. Florida Highway Patrol arrived at the scene alongside a team of paramedics. Despite the efforts of those involved and the arrival of first responders, Arajane's injuries were so severe that she was pronounced dead at the scene. Arajane's family was notified of her tragic passing, and they were understandably devastated. Well, this afternoon, one Douglas family is devastated after their 26-year-old daughter was killed while walking 
along I-10 in Jacksonville. Now this all happened after she was celebrating her birthday. It's just, this is never gonna be fixed. That's Latrell Wallace, Arajane McTeer's father. He says he's torn and heartbroken. Well, today I visit Arajane's family in Douglas and they all tell me they just wanna know the truth and understanding behind their daughter and sister's passing. The Florida Highway Patrol says Arajane was walking in the outside lane of I-10. That's when two vehicles hit and killed her. Her father wants something done. To the agencies of the state of Florida, we just want justice for our baby. We want to know how do you leave a young lady on Interstate 10 and there's no criminal, nothing. We want the police officers who investigate and investigate this like it's their family, like it's their daughter. Wallace says Arajane went to Jacksonville from Douglas to celebrate her 26th birthday with her two friends. He says the family was waiting for her to come back home because they planned an after party. We don't know what the laws are in Florida, but to put someone out on the highway, there's videos of the young lady and while having so much fun. So we don't know what happened. I can't do this. It's the hardest thing I ever did in my life. They had so many questions as to why their loved one would be walking on a highway alone at 2.50 in the morning. They expressed that they have not been given an explanation as to why she was there not from the friends and not from authorities. There were rumors on social media about what actually happened to Arajane. Many blamed her friends and felt they were responsible for her death. Her friend then made a post to her social media account after the tragedy. She posted. My voice is completely gone. I would never do anything to hurt my friend or put her in harm's way. We were headed home. Tisha was driving, Strawberry was in the front and I was in the back. She got a call and flipped out. I don't know who it was or what it was, but it triggered her. She grabbed the steering wheel, we swerved. Tisha was trying to stop. Strawberry was trying to put the car in park and kept yelling let me out of here. I gotta get out of here. She opened the door before we could even stop. She jumped out and started running down the highway. Keisha ran after her. I'm yelling because incoming traffic was coming. We hopped in the car to get off the exit and come back up so we can get her. We drove up and down the highway for hours. We went to the gas station and called the police. We waited on the police. They were no help. We drove back on the highway. We called every hospital in Jacksonville. Cops called us asking for her information again, but did not disclose any information. We then called Highway Patrol, they couldn't give us info, but told us to check news for Jackson. There was an article of a pedestrian being hit. We drove to the hospital closer to the scene. We didn't know what happened or if it was really her. They wouldn't give us any information, but confirmed it was a female. We immediately started reaching out to get her mom or sister number, and called her sister. The family of a Douglas woman continues searching for answers months after learning that their daughter died on her 26th birthday while traveling with friends to Jacksonville. WAOV News 10's Alicia Lewis reports that the family is hurt by the lack of any progress in their search for the truth. A. Rajane McTeer is the woman involved in the fatal accident. Her family is still grieving, but also questioning why the women their daughter traveled with that night have not been taken in for questioning by investigators. In a 90 day time frame, the McTeer family have been living in a nightmare. Her dad says since the tragedy, there's been a lot of back and forth hearsay on social media, but no leads as to what really happened. During that whole ordeal, my daughter's purse, her license, everything was in a separate location at our apartment complex inside her car in the front seat with the doors unlocked. In the Dak Shack in Jacksonville, Florida, the Interstate 17 in McDuff is 17 miles. So whatever transpired in them 17 miles, we have no answers. Investigators say a Rajane McTeer was walking in the outside lane of I-10 in Jacksonville when two vehicles were going west near McDuff Avenue and hit and killed her. I reached out to State Patrol in Jacksonville to get an update. There's no new updates. Everything still stands as is. We're currently waiting on toxicology and the autopsy report to be returned to us. And then at that point, the investigation will be concluded. Wallace says the family is destroyed. Everybody who's hurting right now, I will absorb their pain. Because when I see her mother cry, when I see her grandma cry, I see my daughters cry, 
when I see her friends in the street cry I post things about my daughter every day that somebody is posting something special about my daughter. Wallace did mention that the family is not upset at anyone. They just want to know the truth on what happened the night McTeer died as she was celebrating her 26th birthday. The Medical Institute of South Georgia officials conveyed their condolences through a heartfelt post on social media where they expressed their sympathy and support, stating, she was kind, loving, and as sweet of an individual as anyone could ever want near them. She followed instructions well and aimed to meet her goals. We will never forget Arajane, she made it. Honor graduate of our medical assistant certification program and true friend to many. We stand in prayer for her family and are in need of everyone's prayers for the grief our hearts feel, knowing our dear Nay is no longer with us. To her parents, you did a great job with her, and we thank you for gifting us with a person as sweet as your daughter to train, know and love. God bless. The celebration to honor and remember Arajane's life took place on Friday, July 1, 2022. The event featured a balloon release as a symbolic gesture to cherish her memory. The following day, a service was held at Central Square, starting at 1 p.m. The family had a special request for attendees to wear pink and white in remembrance of McTeer, symbolizing her vibrant spirit and personality. What happened to Arajane is beyond tragic. A night of celebration turned into her family's worst nightmare. She didn't deserve what happened to her. There is an expectation that when you go out to celebrate with friends, that you will be safe and you all will come home together. To be left on a dark highway alone is unimaginable. My condolences to her friends and family. May you find the answers you are looking for and continue to heal from this devastating tragedy. Thanks for watching and I will see you in the next video.